Hello Facebook, YouTube. Today I'm still at the Starbucks. Another video. Hey, cold weather. <laughs> All right. But the topic of this message is very important. <laughs> um, you know, this is talking about the reality of belonging. The reality of belonging. Now, I want to separate the word belong and say B and B is an important to me is a very important word to understand you know um, B means I think like you know we're human beings um, I think B is a real important word because if that's the ideal of who is the our makeup of the kind of people that we are, I think B should be a very important word to understand. And but B means I looked it up, it's called to exist. You know what I'm saying? We uh exist on earth, uh, more likely live, you know what I'm saying? We live, you know, in into an in existence. You know what I'm saying? That uh people need to understand about B. Now, here's the, uh, here's the important factor of this message. Um, David presents a, a good, honest evaluation of himself in Psalms 51. Uh, he talks about, you know, to be uh, that, you know, sin, he was in his mother's womb. I mean, he was iniquity, he was shaping sin in his mother's womb. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, you know, people don't under, he honestly took an evaluation of himself that he realized in a simple, a simple evaluation that he was begotten in a bad condition. You know what I'm saying? He was, he, he had he was already had a bad condition when he came in this world. He came in this world with a bad condition. And the thing is, he recognized that. And he honestly understand that, you know, he needs to, uh, something has, because of this bad condition, something has to be done to get this bad condition to get right. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, you know, he said the popular, you know, saying is create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit inside of me. He asked the Lord to do that. And the thing is, but he did, but because he, now here's the cool part I like about it. He recognized that he had a bad condition, which is the ideal of honesty. And my, you know, slogan that God taught me in life that in in order you in order to live holy, you have to come through honesty. You know what I'm saying? You got to come through honesty. You know what I'm saying? Not you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm going to just live holy by the power of my corrupted flesh. No, that's not going to happen. Um. Uh, you no, know, David evaluated his life. He evaluated, watch this, his existence of where he came from. And a lot of people, because, you know, in the world system we live in, that I notice about a lot of people, that, you know, it's created to keep everybody busy to the point that they don't get a, a better evaluation of their life. Evaluation of who they are, and to me, you know how the television and the radio and uh, school and everything else, your surroundings, your uh, environment, is not giving you a chance to, ex you know, sit back and say, "Who am I, and what's my purpose?" I know. I feel something in me, you know, everybody feels something in me that I can do way much more than what I'm doing right now concerning the things I'm doing. That's it's in every human being, I guarantee. And you know that in that feeling there, 
people don't like that feeling. People don't like that feeling that they feel like that there's something inside me that can do better. You know what I'm saying? They don't like that feeling. They try to ignore that feeling. They try to, with taking drugs and drinking or whatever, anything to get that feeling and ignore that feeling that there's something better, that I can do something better inside me, cries out. And we try to ignore and suppress that cry with something, you know, get something from this earth to try to suppress that cry that there's better inside me, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people want to ignore it. They want to stay in a condition of darkness and continue on thinking that they, watch this, belong there. Mm. Does the question is that I'm raising up to you, do you belong in darkness? Do you belong in a place of hostility? Do you belong in a place that people don't get along with each other? Do you belong in a place where confusion and conflict and chaos is going on? Do you belong there? Do you belong in a position that people only speak negative of you? always do negative towards you, always lie on you, always mistreat you, do you belong in a place? It's like this. Um, do, you know, a person, you know, is supposed to belong in a place that is supposed to perish? You know, does life belong with death? You know what I'm saying? Does life is supposed, and death is supposed to find agreement? You know what I'm saying? Uh, does, you know, that negativity has somewhat a, a place in my life? Does negative negativity supposed to have a place in my life? A uh, idea of subtraction, an uh, idea of taking away, an uh, idea of draining the life out, out of me instead of not giving me life. You know what I'm saying? Does this kind of uh, life belongs to me that I feel less? You know what I'm saying? People in the king, in, in darkness, they feel less of themselves. They will always feel less of themselves, regardless of how much they think they all that and all. You know the you know the bark. You know what I'm saying? They tell you that I'm better than you. I'm better than this. I'm better than you. You ain't better than me. You ain't better than me. Well, behind all that bark, there is a person inside that feels less of it themselves you know what I'm saying and the thing is they think well you know because watch this it is here that this place exists that means I belong here because that negative place exists you know what I'm saying because the place of darkness is in the world they think because that place of darkness is there I belong there. Is that a correct evaluation of life? Is that a, you know, have you evaluated life more correctly uh, from your standpoint and your point of view? Look, David evaluated it. And he evaluated it honestly, said, look, straight up, you know what I'm saying? When I saw Bathsheba bathing in that pool, guess what? Sin was in my became the Bible James talks about sin that tice, lust and tice come together and birth sin. Sin was birth inside me. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? I wanted to commit adultery with this woman. Even though I slayed a giant, even though I uh, built uh, I, I recovered the Ark of the Covenant, even though I uh, established the Jerusalem, the holiest city, you know what I'm saying? Even though I did these accomplishments for God, sin was birthed inside of me. You know what I'm saying? Even And you know the thing about, I keep telling people about David, King David was at his higher height. It's kind of like he was like the President of the United States of America, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, having everything wonderful, all of a sudden, bam, getting a scandal. You know what I'm saying? That's how the situation David's life was. So David took an honest 
assessment of himself. And he came to this real, true conclusion that each and every individual should resonate in that they were born in sin and, and shaped with iniquity. They was born in a place of darkness. They was born in a place that they are capable of doing wrong, are capable of doing evil. Look what they, King David did afterwards of sleeping with this woman. He got the you know, woman's husband killed. He became adulterous and a killer just like that. You know what I'm saying? Just like that. This is the King David, you know what I'm saying, that slay Goliath, uh, established the Jerusalem, uh, bring about the Ark of the Covenant. You know what I'm saying? This is this guy. You know what I'm saying? But here's the thing, you know, that we need to come to understand David's life. That David could have dwelled in darkness. You know what I'm saying? He could have dwelled in that darkness. He could have stayed taking other people's wives and, you know, uh, sleeping with other people's wives. You know what I'm saying? He could have stayed in this condition. But David looked at himself and said, wait a minute, hold. I am chosen by God. I am chosen. God has placed me where I'm at. God placed me here. You read, you know, Psalms, you hear you hear his songs. The Lord, he said, the Lord, the Lord placed me here. The Lord is the, what got me the place where I'm at right now. You know what I'm saying? Not David, but the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And when we realize and come to this understanding of this conclusion and realize that God, our creator that created us in his image and his likeness, uh, this is the this is the person I'm supposed to reflect. This is the person that I'm supposed to be. This is the person that a uh, substance is supposed to be inside of me if I'm going to exist in this world. You know what I'm saying? Because his breath was blue inside of me that gave humanity life. You know what I'm saying? And made us a living soul. Not the earth didn't blow the breath. Satan didn't blow breath inside of us. But the Lord, the God, Lord thy God, blew breath inside of us. And the question is that it's going to keep on speaking to us each and every day of our lives. Is where do we belong? Where do we belong? How, or more likely, how long do you think you're supposed to exist in where you're at right now? How long are you supposed to remain in darkness? Who, how long are you supposed to, uh, uh, when are you going to go to the light where you belong? How how long? Who determines that? You know I'm saying yes, we determine that. But the question is, are we gonna? Uh, uh, but are we allowing darkness to lie to us? Satan is the father of lies. Tell us that we belong here. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna continue to let Satan lies tell us that we are supposed to be mistreated. We're supposed to be abused. We're supposed to have a bad, living a bad and terrible lifestyle, and be around people that do that. We're supposed to be here. This is where we belong. Are we going to hear that baloney? <laughs> that came out, y'all. Are we going to keep listening to this baloney and eating it up? Or are we going to throw this baloney away and say, look, I belong to a God that created universes. The universe. I belong to somebody way more greater than anything that ever existed. Period. I'm supposed to be reflecting and I am a vessel of him that he created it. When we come to that understanding and that existence in our life, then that's when things will make sense. You know what I'm saying? Nonsense is not supposed to make sense that people are doing these days. They're allowing, you know, fighting. I'm, I'm, somebody fighting me and beating me up. Somebody's brutalizing my body. Somebody's damaging my body. And I, this is the place where I belong to, that I'm being damaged all the time. I'm supposed to have a broken heart. I'm supposed to be mistreated. Come, come on, y'all. Things are not created to be destroyed. Things are created to exist and exist for a purpose that it can help better other people but not make people worse. So the question is, where do you exist and how long are you supposed to be there? You know what I'm saying? Is I'm asking you or on this question that I hope you ask yourself this honest question and make an honest decision after this question. So that's the message. I hope you got it. I hope you belong to the proper place to God be the glory and forever and ever in Jesus' name.